Hey there, and welcome back to our video series on language structures. If you're new here, my name is Anna DiGilio. I was a primary teacher for 23 years, and on this channel, we deal with all things literacy instruction and really dig into the science of reading research and structured literacy. So if you're new here, please click that little subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you're alerted every time one of my new videos goes live. So today what we're going to do is we are going to explore how to address categorization and classification in the classroom to strengthen semantics. Now, if you have not watched my first video in the series called Understanding Semantics, please be sure and go back to that video first and watch it. It really lays the foundation that's necessary to dive into these videos that focus on the individual activities. Okay, so with that said, let's jump into today's video. Have you ever wondered why we sort our toys or group crayons by color or even organize our books? More abstractly, have you ever wondered why certain topics are easier for some students to comprehend while others their age struggle to grasp them? The answer to both of these things is the same. It actually comes down to our abilities to categorize and classify not only objects, but also concepts and information. So today we're going to learn to explore why learning to categorize and classify is so important to learners. The concept of categorizing and classifying is simple. It is what we're doing when we organize things into groups based on how they are alike or how they're different. So this might seem simple, but it really is a critical foundational skill that helps children make sense of the world around them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna journey on back <laughs> to our college days, and we're gonna talk about the textbooks from our teacher preparation programs. Perhaps you remember learning about a man named Jean Piaget. So Piaget had a fascinating way of really explaining how our brains like to categorize and classify information. So according to Piaget, we have these things called schemes in our mind, which are the basis for how we organize knowledge. Basically, when we're young and we're first experiencing the world, we group similar experiences away in our minds to create our schemes. So you could think of these like kind of like boxes in our brain, and each box collects examples from the world that prove something that we've come to believe is true. So let me give you an example to help this make sense a little bit. Here's an example of our schemes at work. If a child learns through sensory exploration, let's say at the age of three, that a little furry four-legged creatures living in their house are fluffy and friendly, they will have a scheme in their mind that says furry four-legged creatures are fluffy and friendly and they might approach these creatures to pet them. Now, as we move about our world, we continue to add to our schemes, those boxes. For example, let's say the child who has that scheme visits grandma's house and meets her furry four-legged creature, right? Now, the child's brain has a scheme for this creature and immediately processes the fact that this animal is approachable because furry four-legged creatures are fluffy and friendly. And let's say grandma's creature is both of those things. When the child approaches the animal to pet it, this information assimilates and it assimilates into their existing schemes. When the child approaches that animal to pet it, this information assimilates into their existing schemes. In other words, it basically fits and it doesn't challenge what the child already knows. So the child has interpreted the new information within the framework of their existing knowledge already. But let's say later that week, the child's playing in the backyard and they see a four-legged creature there. Now, according to the child's schemes or cognitive organizational system, that they use to make sense of the world around them, four-legged creatures are fluffy and friendly. So the child approaches the raccoon to pet it. But instead of reacting the way the child is expecting, the raccoon tries to attack the child. Now, that information doesn't assimilate 
into the child's built-in categorization and classification system. So now that child has to accommodate their schemes, which is kind of like a fancy way of saying that they have to make small changes in their already processed knowledge because what they have just experienced doesn't actually fit into their existing mental organizational system. So after making this change, their overall system of categorizing and classifying the world around them actually has been updated to reflect now their current knowledge and experiences, i.e. the raccoon experience. Now, Jean Piaget's theory is just that, it's a theory. But for nearly a hundred years, it has helped educators make sense of how children experience the world around them and learn new information. And at the basis of this information is how they categorize and classify information. So this certainly is a skill we wanna continuously strengthen in the classroom. Because we have the potential to help children grow and adapt those boxes, or their schemes daily. So now that you have a big picture, a little bit, you know, a little bit of confusing picture, but a big picture of this critical skill, Let's narrow it down and, and narrow in on some of its benefits. So when children learn to categorize and classify, they develop critical thinking skills. They learn to observe, they learn to compare and understand the relationships between different items. So whether they're grouping shapes by color and size or sorting animals based on their habitats. Children learn to observe and then make decisions based on similarities, and differences. This skill helps with reading too. When young readers categorize words and ideas, they actually understand the stories that they're reading better. For example, knowing the difference between farm animals and zoo animals really helps readers comprehend and remember information. It gives context to the story that they're reading without requiring much of the student's cognitive load. So categorizing and classifying also prepare children for more complex tasks in the future. They become better equipped to handle math and science and other subjects that really require logical thinking and problem solving. Also, we can't lose sight of the fact that categorizing and classifying can be a lot of fun. Games and activities that involve grouping objects can turn learning into playtime and making it enjoyable and really engaging. And most of our favorite family games like Uno and Guess Who really rely on a player's ability to categorize and classify information. This is truly a skill that we continue to develop and strengthen throughout our lives. Have you ever traveled abroad and noticed how much you rely on this skill to figure out which stores to go to to purchase the food that you want or a household item that you might have forgotten to pack? Your brain has developed the ability to quickly glance at a group of items and assign them a meaning or a category so you could make sense of them. It really truly is a magnificent skill. Hopefully now you can see how the ability to categorize and classify things really pays off for our young learners and readers and how important it is that we address them in the classroom. Now again, it doesn't have to be complicated or time consuming to do this at all. It could be so easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the activities that I've used to teach this critical skill. Now, if you've watched my previous videos about semantics, you know that I complete a semantics warm up activity with students every time we're about to read a new book so they can become familiar with key vocabulary that's going to appear in the book. We've got to talk about key vocabulary before we're going to read a story. I always do that. It builds vocabulary, right? So when a book lends itself to this activity, I make sure to choose categorization and classification as my quick warm-up activity. Okay, let's take this book, A Doe Asks for Help, as our example. This is part of our Structured Literacy with Ease curriculum, and it's one of our decodable books. In this book, one of the key terms we're going to focus on is the word 
faux. So first, of course, I'm going to show it in the book. I'm going to use one of my little handy dandy translucent uh, post-it flags. I love these things. I keep them at my reading table all the time. I use them so, so much. So first, I'm gonna help students define and understand the meanings of the word faux. I'll provide a few examples of what a faux might be before turning my attention to the animal kingdom. So I'll ask students, what animal might be a faux to a deer? We'll take a few minutes to discuss how animals that prey on deer might be considered their foes. Students might even have more creative ways to interpret the word faux and decide that other deer could be their foe if they're being combative about, let's say, a shared living space, right? So students will brainstorm as many deer foes as they can for one or two minutes. Once they have their lists, I'll ask them to share what they came up with and we'll make a long class list. This is the part where the activity gets fun. Once we have our class list of deer foe, I'll ask them to do an open sort where they look at the animals on the list and sort them into categories of their choosing. They can work with partners on this, and then when they're done, they can share their groups with other students to see if others can identify the categories that they chose. Now, if this, see, if this task seems a little daunting for some learners, of course that could happen, I might provide the categories for them, like sort the animals that can climb, and those that can't, or sort the animals by size of the animals. So it's a little bit of a scaffold for some students. This was one of my students' favorite semantics activities. The human brain loves to make sense of the world around you, and categorizing and classifying is really a very natural way to do this. So that kind of sums up our very, very quick video on categorizing and classifying. I want you to give this simple, quick strategy a try in your classroom and watch as students can really expand their own internal organizational systems for making sense of the world, their schemes, those boxes in their brain. So that's it for today on semantics and focusing on classifying and categorizing. Thank you so much for watching. And again, remember, please click that subscribe button and that little bell next to it so that you're alerted every time one of my new videos goes live. And remember, a few minutes goes a long way toward understanding semantics and boosting language comprehension. So thanks so much for watching and happy teaching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.